Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Gordon Gamble, who asked me to review Sorceress. And hopefully I've got the right one, and he didn't mean the 1995 Jim Wynorski movie called Sorceress. Because after last episode, the Black Bars could really use a break. Then again, considering Wynorski also wrote this movie and it was produced by Roger Corman, I have a feeling they'll be showing up in this episode, too. <laughs> Alright, so if you remember my Death Stalker episode, you know that in the 80s, Roger Corman produced a bunch of fantasy movies in Latin America to try and cash in on Conan the Barbarian. But Death Stalker wasn't Corman's first 80s fantasy flick, with Sorceress being released the year before. Unlike Death Stalker, which was filmed in Argentina, this one was filmed in Mexico. But the real noteworthy thing about it is that it was directed by noted exploitation filmmaker Jack Hill, who in addition to horror movies is probably best known for a series of films starring Pam Greer, like The Big Dollhouse, Coffee, and Foxy Brown. Of course you wouldn't know that from watching the movie, since Jack decided to use a pseudonym here. More on that later. But you know what? The important thing is that this is a Roger Corman production, which means we can rest assured it's gonna try and cram as much in for as little money as possible. Now, considering this is an 80s fantasy movie, is this gonna begin with a village getting raised or a baby getting kidnapped? Jatrias! Trigon has found us! Careful! Don't harm the child! Ah, baby getting kidnapped intro. Very nice. The baby in question belongs to our villain, Tragon, who by the looks of it is very upset he didn't get sole custody in the divorce. Alright, actually he needs to sacrifice his firstborn child to some ancient god thingy for... magic reasons. But there's a bit of a complication. By Honora. There are two. Oh, it's Roger Corman's Oscar bait movie, Tragon's Choice. Tragon needs to know which was born first, again, for magic reasons, and he'll get that information by any means necessary. <laughs> Ugh, early attempts at trimming a woman's bikini line were a little crude. And who the hell is this old hippie fuck? Krona. This is no affair of yours. Krona? Alright, well, can't think of any topical references I could possibly make here, so guess I'll just keep going. Okay, I'll do just one. I see this Krona also doesn't like when people go outside and gather together. Not only that, but I think our villain's just been killed and we're only five minutes in. What's the rest of the movie gonna be about? People getting drunk and celebrating? Tell me, Trigon. Which of your three lives am I taking now? Only my first, Krona. Ah, so Trigon's got multiple lives like in a video game. Hopefully he doesn't have to start right back from the beginning. As soon as I find the secret of the Contra Code, I'll be unstoppable! Take my babies. I will. And they will become great warriors. They are... girl children. Oh. Okay, guess they can't be warriors then. Ah, of course they'll be warriors. They gotta compete with Red Sonya, after all. Alright, time to bestow upon the twins some mystical optical effect powers, then dump them on another couple so you don't actually have to raise them. Someday men will come, and they will be looking for the two who are one, but they will be looking for girl children, so no one must know they're girls. Not to worry, Krona. I got a VHS copy of just one of the guys ready to show them. I mentioned that Tragon has multiple lives, but apparently it took 20 years before he was actually able to come back. Jeez, good thing his minions are patient. I would have started looking for work with another wizard way before then. Speaking of his minions, they include both monks and a monkey man. Oh, and this chick who brought some black bars with her. Know that each of you who serves me well shall one day rule a nation and command an army such as the world has never seen! Mmm, I don't think this movie has the budget for an army. At best, we can go to a local bar and see who's willing to be an extra for a weekend. Meanwhile, the twins, Mira and Mara, are now all grown up, and are busy hiding that they're girls by frolicking naked in a stream. Come on, this movie was written by Jim Wynorski. What did you think they'd be doing? Well, nice that this movie decided to include a little eye candy, and oh dear God, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> what sort of creature is that? I don't know. He seems friendly, though. Yeah, if by friendly you mean he looks like he wants to wear your skin. Hi there. Wanna come in for a swim? Okay, girls, take my advice. Don't let that thing anywhere near you. 
That's the right response. This is Pando the Horny Goat Boy, and believe it or not, he's actually supposed to be a good guy. Are you sure he meant us harm? Yes! Oh, and there's one other thing about him I should probably mention. What's that? Hanging between his legs. I don't know. Some kind of horn? A weapon, then? I'm assuming they mean his dick, but considering we can't actually see it at any point in the movie, I'm not really sure what they're talking about. Alright, well, who knows? Maybe Pando's a grower, not a shower. Oh, hey, now we're at the part where a village gets raised. Just what do these guys want, anyway? A sword, Captain! Rebel! You have an illegal weapon! Hey, I'm just exercising my right to defend my hut from pervy goat monsters. A man has a right to defend his home! Defend from whom? From us? Considering you're burning his house and raping his daughter, yeah, I'd say he does need to protect himself from you. Unfortunately for this guy, not even some homemade nunchucks are enough to save him. You really should have made a Donatello weapon, that had the longest reach. The twins finally arrive, and their warrior skills would have really come in handy if they had got here a few seconds earlier before their entire family was slaughtered. Take them men! And a slow death to any man who harms them! Yeah, make sure you take them alive. Or, you know, don't, whichever you feel like. Not that it matters, the twins are able to drive the bandits away. They're used to fighting off rapey perverts. Ho oh there, lad. I salute you. Hey, who you calling a ho, Gimli? Uh, great, let me guess. These two are gonna make up their quest party? Alright, well, could be worse. At least Marlon Wayans isn't tagging along. Hello, girls. You may remember me as Hindu Chris Christopherson from earlier, but apparently I'm Moses now. Krona tells the girls to get revenge on Tragon, but to do that, they'll need some help. You need the name. The secret name of the Almighty. Vital. Remember. Vital. Vital. Oh, sure, but when they actually try to remember the word, they'll say it like this. Klaatu. Marada. <laughs> Good luck on your quest, girls. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to light myself on fire to protest the Vietnam War. Toodles! Okay, using RPG game rules, before they can begin their quest, they'll need to go to a marketplace to stock up on supplies. Or, you know, they could just go to this medieval strip club. Now, let's see, who's gonna be the next member of their party? The guy from Puma Man or Imitation William Cat here? Don't dogs have ears, barbarian? Don't they speak? We have ears. And we speak. Arf! Arf! It's gonna be the guy with the perm, isn't it? Yep, looks like I was right. A brawl erupts, although considering it's because this guy was cheating at dice, isn't he kind of the bad guy here? Oh well, better help him out anyway. Except you, Pando. Just stand there and be pervy. It's what you're good at. Yo! What happened here? Barbarians. Four of them. And there were two who were as one. Just say twins, dummy! By the gods, I can't tell you apart. Okay, seriously, do people not know what twins are in this movie? Double Mint commercials must be confusing as hell to them. The curly-haired guy is called Ehrlich, and he decides to join their quest because... I don't know, I guess they needed a barbarian character. It definitely ain't because of his intelligence. <laughs> the perfect disguise. <laughs> but your girl. Ah. Uh, girls have boobies. Okay, to be fair to Ehrlich, he's not the only one who's a little naive. But there's something about that Ehrlich. He gives me such a funny feeling, the way he looks at me. Hey, as long as it's not the same feeling as when Pando looks at you, no one should have to experience that. Uh-oh, looks like they're being followed, but how is she going to get him to come out? Open. I'm a friend. Ehrlich sent me. Will come. Ah, the old it's okay, I'm cool trick. Very clever. I don't know what's worse, the twins getting captured or that the only one who can save him is fucking Pando. What's that, boy? Timmy's trapped down a well? You want me to steal second? Come on, follow charades rules, you weird goat fuck. Not to be outdone by the heroes, I see the villains brought that orangutan gimp back. Now, one last time, which of you is the firstborn? Oh, I can answer that. I remember being born first. Wait, no I don't, because I was a baby. Only one way to settle this, we'll burn them and then carbon date their bones to find out who's older. Or just use more magic shit. Magic shit works. Alright, let's hurry up and get this rescue going. We're halfway through the movie and we're still at the opening marketplace part of the quest. Who knew the tall barbarian? Find out who he is. 
And when he comes. Here's a fun fact. The guy in the gorilla costume studied apes at the zoo to prepare for his role. So nice that somebody went method for this movie. Although let's hope he didn't get too method. Who knew? Would you like to have a reward? And if you succeed, you shall have the second of the two who are one for your own pleasure. Oh great, as if Panda wasn't bad enough. Now they gotta worry about this thing getting rapey? Hey, forest section. If this were a Zelda game, they'd be making progress. That's the forbidden forest. No one ever comes out of there alive. Good. Maybe the Shatrias will be afraid to follow us. Plus, if you die, that means they can't capture you again. Before they continue, better have a talk with the girls about the birds and the bees. Do you know where babies come from? We were given to our parents by Krona. You know where the baby goats come from, don't you? Uh, I have a question. Where the hell did Pando come from? Did some lonely farmer try making baby goats himself? Oh shit, it's worse than I thought. There's actually an army of these weird monkey things. And they brought... laughing gas? <laughs> <laughs> eh, they are in the movie Sorceress. Might as well get high as shit. <laughs> they got some poor schlubs to wear these costumes all day in the Mexican heat. That is pretty funny. Ehrlich gets captured along with one of the girls. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Let's just assume it's the one that needs to be sacrificed. Listen, my child. I am your father. My father? Empire Strikes Back reference. You'd think Ehrlich would be in trouble for killing Trigon's men, but instead they're gonna execute him for cheating at dice, which- wait, what the hell? Okay, uh, maybe Ehrlich is just really into Indian religious symbols. Hopefully. So what's his punishment? Know that the penalty for cheating in the games is death by impalement. Yeah, get ready to pose for the poster to Cannibal Holocaust, Ehrlich. He's saved when it's discovered he's part of an ancient bloodline that means he needs to impregnate one of the twins which would complete the ceremony? Or something like that. Point is he's not getting turned into a human popsicle today. And as long as we're adding plot conveniences... I see a village. What do you mean, see? It's always been this way between Mara and me. We see what the other is seeing, and we feel what the other is feeling. I would have mentioned it earlier, but it didn't seem important. They better get to the castle before Trigon completes the ceremony. Uh, what exactly is he planning to do again? You see the moonbeam here? Tomorrow night, it will traverse this mark. Here, a new age will begin on Earth. And you will be its first avatar. Okay, okay, magic shit, got it. You will understand everything later. Yeah, we'll see about that. Meanwhile, Ehrlich is busy preparing for the ceremony by getting drunk on glow stick juice. And damn, this chick is really pushing the boundary of whether or not I should black box her. Hmm, I think she may have a thing for Ehrlich. Must be his raw, brillo pad haired masculinity. I'm bored with Trigon and his magic. I don't want to rule the world. Not with him. I want a man. A real man beside me. I'm sick of cheating on him with the monkey. Joke's on you though, Ehrlich. She was actually loyal to Tragon this whole time. Either that or he's asking her if he can watch. Before that though, he's gotta put his seed in Mara. He isn't dressed like Caligula for nothing, you know. Is this really you? You've suddenly become a woman. They've always looked like women. You were just too dumb to notice. The best part about her not knowing about men, if he pops off early, you can just tell her that's normal. And if you remember that the twins feel what the other one feels, this scene is going exactly where you think it is. <gasps> oh, it's Mara. Mara? Is she being uh, tortured? Uh, 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 oh. Well, uh, guess there's no harm in watching. Just don't get too carried away, okay, Pando? Meanwhile, in an Iron Maiden album cover, Tragon is busy doing... Uh... Bye. Again, more magic shit. Better hurry up and rescue Mara. She's there, Mara. A lot of soldiers up there. We have to go in under cover of night. And since it's clearly mid-afternoon, we'll just have to wait. They try rescuing Mara using the stealth approach. And when that doesn't work, they try going in sword swinging, which doesn't work either. Damn, you two are really not good at this. <laughs>
Just kidding, they're alive. By the looks of it, they just fell into a blind dead movie. Monkey Boy, however, is upset. He wanted to show Mara that Pando's not the only horny animal monster in this movie. Speaking of Pando, just where the hell did he go? <laughs> Ah, so that's what he was doing. And listen, monkey boy, just cause you didn't get a sex slave doesn't mean you also have to cockblock Pando. Alright, time to prepare for the ceremony, first by dumping the sacred Pert Plus, then forming a drum circle. Boy, Ehrlich and Mara are sure going along with all this. They must have really gotten hammered on glow stick juice earlier. And I don't know that these two are doing much better. Bitch. Hey, I got to use a new Dave Chappelle drop. Shit, looks like they really did fall into a blind dead movie. What are they? Sorcery. Illusion. They can't be real. Why not? These two abominations against nature are real. How many horny monsters can they possibly have lust over the twins? Even the zombies in this movie can't resist copping a feel. Also, wasn't there something important Krona told him? When all seems lost, use the name Vital. Vital. Oh yeah, that whole plot device. I completely forgot about it. Just like the characters. So what does this word do, anyway? Okay, this movie has had some weird shit in it so far, but even I wasn't expecting the God of Thundercats to show up. This lion monster was made by John Carl Beechler, who also did effects work in From Beyond, Terror Vision, and several other movies featured on this show. And because it's easily the most memorable thing about this movie, Corman decided to use stock footage of it in another fantasy flick of his. That makes sense. After all, the music here was recycled from Battle Beyond the Stars. Now that these two are out of their trance, looks like Tragon won't be able to complete the ceremony. I give you another! Almighty One! <laughs> oh, okay, I guess he could have just sacrificed anybody this whole time. Nice that our heroes were able to summon the Cat God, but wasn't Tragon trying to summon his own god? <laughs> Eh, I don't know. Compared to the cat thing, a giant floating witch head just isn't as impressive. Not only is the Lion God a better effect than this thing, but he's got the Billy Idol sneer down to a T. Get ready for one epic battle. Okay, that was easy. God damn, they should have just said the name of this lion thing sooner. They could have saved themselves a ton of trouble that way. Tragon may still have his army of rape zombies, but our heroes have... Uh... Pando and his army of sheep herders. Whatever, they're still probably gonna win. Alright, Tragon. Looks like your plan to summon a giant head and take over the world, or whatever the fuck you were doing, has been foiled. Now let's see what you're made of. Sorcerer. Title drop. Wait, no it isn't. Sure, Tragon may have the power to turn a sword into a snake, but when is he gonna learn to look behind him? My children. I'm glad I wrote you out of the will, you brats! Well, there's only a couple minutes left and we still need to fit in the end credits, so better wrap this up as quickly as possible. Well, my lad, isn't one enough for you? You forget, Baldar. These two... are one. <laughs> <laughs> and on that day, Ehrlich helped invent incest porn. The end. Like most Roger Corman productions, Sorceress did turn a profit, making about eight times its budget back. However, there were various problems behind the scenes, such as Roger Corman giving Jack Hill a much smaller budget than he was promised, as well as re-editing Hill's original cut against his wishes. Hill also wanted to cast Sid Haig as Pando and was upset when Corman refused, although considering how Pando turned out, I think Sid Haig dodged a bit of a bullet there. Hill was so upset he not only had his name taken off the director's credit, he also hasn't directed anything since. Okay, nice to know that in the 80s, Roger Corman helped to both start James Cameron's career and end Jack Hill's. Like a lot of low-budget 80s fantasy flicks, there is some cheesy fun to be had here, although things don't get really batshit crazy until the last 15 minutes or so. It's good for a few laughs, but considering Jack Hill's other work, it's a little disappointing that this was his last film. There is something else that's bugging me, though. Namely, why the hell was this called Sorceress? It can't be referring to the twins, since there's two of them, and Tragon's a guy. So was this lady the Sorceress? Oh well, I guess it's still better than the original title of Pando's Big Adventure. Well, that's all for now.
Until next time.